we want to develop Africa, we have to have an all-African vision. But we also have to note that each and every African country has its own specific problems. Uh, I've read a lot of the history of Sudan. It's very complex. Um, historically, uh, Sudan itself was colonized by Egypt, and Egypt became a, se a semi-colony of Britain. And for many years, when I was very young, it was called Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. Um, but, but in fact, as Egypt was already a semi-colony, uh, it was really under British rule. Uh, the whole history is very complex. It's a large country. There are religious and ethnic differences. Um, and as we see, South Sudan has split away. One thing I just want to mention is that uh, Dr. John Garang, who led the people of South Sudan, was not in favor of South Sudan separating. Uh, John Garang was in favor of a federal Sudan. And then, like in other countries in Africa, he died. He, was, he became, through an agreement which was broken partly by the uh, South African government and by the ANC, he became vice president of Sudan, and three days later, he died. And we're very clear that uh, why he died was because he was anti-imperialist and that uh, he didn't want someone from outside to control it. So South Sudan later became uh, under American leadership. And then again, it split, and they've also had <coughs> their own civil war within South Sudan. So when we look at Africa, there's two things that we have to understand if we want to go forward. We have to understand the external problems and the internal problems. And uh, one person who greatly understood that this was one of our, for me, the greatest of all our African leaders was Kwame Nkrumah. And if you <coughs> listen to Kwame Nkrumah, the speech that he made in 1957, when Ghana became independent, as much as he was an anti-imperialist, he said that Africans must take responsibility for their own country. This, this is the key to everything. Africans must take responsibility. However, having said that, what happened to Nkrumah? Nkrumah wanted to create a an aluminium industry in, in Ghana. <coughs> Ghana was producing bauxite, which is the main aluminium ore. Uh, just to make it cheaper to transport, they then semi-processed it to alumina, and it was shipped to Britain and elsewhere. By the way, my father worked for British Aluminium, which worked with, with, uh, with alumina, which came in from Ghana. So what the West doesn't want, they don't want African countries to develop their own independent economies. They don't want Africa to develop industry. So we have to be very clear when we're looking at all these problems, including the current problem in, in Sudan, is that the central issue is an economic problem. All the, the fighting is around economics. Who controls the resources of Africa? That's what all the politics of Africa is about. Who controls our resources? <coughs> and what, what we had, of course, is that um, in every country in Africa where we've got a good or even a half good uh, leader, he's been removed blocked from power or murdered. I thought there was a lady here from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I think that country, which is the richest in Africa, the richest in African resources, has actually had three of its leaders murdered. First of all, 
Tatius Lumumba. Tatius Lumumba was removed from power with the assistance of the UN General Secretary. And the UN forces was removed from power and murdered. His successor was the Lumumba's forces, Pierre Mulele, trying to make peace, made uh, an agreement to go to meet uh, uh, Mobutu Sese Seiko in, in Congo, and he made the mistake of going there. What happened to Pierre Mulele? They gouged out his eyes. They chopped off his private parts. They chopped off his, his legs and his arms, and they threw his still breathing body into the Congo River. But who was Mobutu working for? Mobutu was working for the Americans and was making sure he got his 10% from the Americans and others using Congo mineral resources. And then again, the next person who came along, uh, Lauren Kabila, took over and all he did was ask that all the mining companies should renegotiate the, the contract so that he, so that Congo should get money uh, from the mining companies instead of just stripping the, the resources. Again, uh, and this is why I'm not very happy with, with Kagame, although recently he's been quite good in the ways he, he developed his own uh, economy. Kagame and Museveni uh, were funded by the, the American government, by Bill Clinton in particular, uh, to invade Congo and create the biggest war ever on the African continent. A war which you, you don't even read about. Journalists didn't cover it. But according to the UN, more than five million people died. Well, some people have questioned those particular uh, numbers. But if five million people died, then in terms of the number of people killed, it's bigger, bigger than the Iraq war, bigger than the Vietnam war. But it wasn't covered because the media was not there. So Congo has had three of its people of its greatest leaders killed. In Zimbabwe, as we all know, Josh Ngong was sidelined, and Josiah Tongo Gaya, the leader of Zandla, the, of the Zandla forces who want to believe that uh, Zimbabwe should be won, well, he, he died, and what we say, and it, it's happened so, much, so often in, in Zimbabwe, that uh, maybe he wasn't killed, but we just see that uh, inconvenient politicians die at convenient times. And uh, I think we've seen that elsewhere in, in Africa. The same happened with John Graham. Oh, it was a helicopter crash. That was a, a very convenient time. Um, so we, we have to understand that the Western forces, in particular the USA, Britain, and France, have interfered all the way along into African affairs. So what we've got is neocolonialism. How did neocolonialism start? When did it start? The first major war against uh, colonialism was in Algeria in the 1950s, <coughs> led by Ahmed Dembele. There was a serious war against France and eventually they drove them out. But it even made, uh, created the collapse of the French, of the French government. Uh, the Fourth Republic, there was complete chaos, and the Gaulle came in, they had the Fifth Republic in France because of that war. And it was very expensive. 